online. Hey guys, early morning prayer. I was talking to the Lord and I said, God, I'm just really tired of all this garbage that's out there. And it's like, man, everything's on steroids, fast forward and just craziness. You know exactly what I'm talking about, pick one. But and then the Lord spoke to me and he said, so am I. This is what he does for me, guys. I don't know what he does for you. He may, you know, speak to you in a little bit different. He speaks to all of us, but it may be, you know, different because we're all different a little bit, you know, in some respects. And so I'm fine with that. But we're all still part of the body of Christ. You have to realize that too. Same body, same God, same Jesus, Holy Ghost, and His Word. He spoke to me and he said, ah, so am I. What he does to me, with me, for me, it's great, honestly, but sometimes it's not, because sometimes it's a little brutal, but he, he takes me to his word. He said, go to Mark 2, 1 through 18. Correlates to he's tired of it. Tired of the sin, guys. And all of us. He wants to heal us. And so his plan was salvation and forgiveness of sin through his son. But we're not bringing it to him. I do 90, whatever percentage, a high percentage. But there's a few things that I've kind of been in the air on recently. Some of them are pretty brutal. It's very the details. Maybe one day there'll be a testimony. But guys, read, read Mark. It's about healing, physical healing. But you know what, guys? It's not everybody's like, oh, you got a physical problem, you got arthritis because you got, you know, a demon. It is demonic, of course. But we live in a natural world, too, guys. Sometimes our bodies just fall apart. There's that, too. Come on, guys. But. It's spiritual and in your mind too. Natural part of your mind. You don't believe me? It's in Revelations 21.6. The fearful and unbelieving. That's all that's out there right now is fear. Dirt has been doing it a long time, guys. And then the world has too. They just amped it up. But who's behind it all? The enemy or soul. To make you fear, right now it's a spirit of lack, fearful of lack, or the government's going to take over, or they're going to force you to do something you don't want to do. Well, they pretty much are trying to right now. Just about every corner you can turn on. It's headed for some real ugliness, guys. We're right in the midst of the ugliness. We might already be there, guys. Honestly, it might flip, switch, might flip tomorrow, just like the virus did. One day everything was okay, and the next, within a month, it was just toast. Now that's all you hear about. Guys, he wants to heal your body and your mind. That's why it says, let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus, who thought not robbery to be equal with God, but took on the form of a bondservant, even at a death. Most big Name preachers and a lot of them, not most, but a lot of them. A lot of Christians do. Man, they don't want to be that servant. Everybody's got the David and Goliath mentality. Slay the giant, run through the town with his bloody head. Nobody wants to be the servant. God wants to heal you, but even the religious bunch, well, how can you blaspheme in God? How can you do that? How can you, you know? He said, isn't it easier to heal the sin? That's what's plaguing us guys, is the sin. Our mind or our body. And either one, the enemy's using against us to try to thwart God's plan and destroy its, its will. I don't know if my camera's acting up or if it's the lighting, sorry. 
to thwart God's purpose and plan in your life. <laughs> He's tired of it. Of us staying in it. Believing it. Oh, wash. Real short, because I want to stay in the theme, but July 4th. I'm in the hospital. I it released July 4th, but I've been in the hospital that, the week before. And a bunch of doctors, they're pretty much yelling at me. Not quite yelling at me, but pretty, pretty serious. Get to the hospital, get to the hospital. I get there. Had to delay the process because of some stuff that I was involved in. It wasn't good, but the delay wasn't, but I got there. And the first thing was you waited too long and you need to go to the hospital and you're gonna lose all your toes. You're gonna lose your toes. Cause I'm diabetic and I got I two really bad infected toes. When I caught them, Ed first got infected. But long story, but the process of different doctors, I just they, they gave me not very good antibiotics and I just didn't long story, but some was mine, some was the system but failed, but I got there and I'm in the hospital. And one main surgeon, more than one, whole teams of them, but one came in the one that I liked and picked. You're gonna lose all five toes. What he didn't realize I've been praying about this. Same thing that happened the year before, get rid of the infection, or two years before, get rid of the infection. It's time to get rid of the sin, the infections, the sin, whether it's in your mind or your body. Bring it to Jesus, the great physician. So I did. And he didn't, you know, and I looked at this doctor and I said, What's wrong with the other five? And the other three. You're gonna lose them anyhow. Well, you know what they wanted? Be in the hospital for eight weeks. I'm sorry to say, guys, but they were looking at the $300,000 hospital bill, or $500,000, whatever it was going to be. I hate to say it. So then the plan was to, to release me with, with antibiotics. What's called a pick line. It was already approved by the insurance company. I didn't know it but at the time, but it was already approved. They wouldn't do it. I fought the system for three weeks and finally switched doctors and long story and got it done and taken care of. Ten weeks, guys, I was on antibiotics. Five, one, and nine. For an hour long. And plus cleaning my foot. And I had to do it all the time, every day at the same time. And just keep doing it, doing it, doing it. Last, last diagnosis, two weeks ago, doctor said, see you in three months. You're not going to lose anything. Okay, well, what if I would have took the advice of the first, uh, not one surgeon, I'd want to come in the hospital to, you know, teams of them all, all the time. I was in there a week. All the time. They were all, and they all said the same thing. Sign this, you know, they they were like, sign this and you're going to want to operate tomorrow or tonight. I mean, they were like pushing it really hard. I said, no, get rid of the infection first. One of the doctors diagnosed him and been but this part of it, and then you got to hear the other part about the about the David and Goliath mentality that's in the church and in the world, just craziness. But the um, other part of it was lost track of my thoughts for a second. Hang on. So, oh yeah, one of the one of the main surgeons, the one I liked and the one I would have used, he said. You'll be able to walk, but you probably won't be ever be able to run again. Well, I can go to the Word, guys. I'll run and not be weary. I still can't run. I got some other issues, but God's grace is sufficient. But I got on my toes still. So, but the David and mentality issue, God wants to heal us. But also, too, what if he doesn't? Are you still going to serve him? He's able. I'm under a lot of grace right now, guys. We all are. 
That's the beauty of the cross and Jesus. But you kind of bring it to him. So, the David and Goliath mentality. So I this open vision. I'm not nuts. I have them all the time, guys. I'm sorry. I just do. I can't change that. Some of y'all, he speaks to you differently. That doesn't, doesn't make me any greater than or any less than anybody. I'm just who I am. And God designed me to be visionary. And this vision, I saw an aircraft carrier. Huge. I've seen plenty of them. It's a plenty of shows. I've seen them one in real life. Toured one. Pretty big ships, you know. Like really cramped quarters inside. And But this aircraft carrier. Well, this is an old movie, Top Gun, Tom Cruise. Light the fire, kick the tires. Everybody wants to be that fighter pilot. He flew in that 14, now it's F-18s or whatever. Blow up the bad guys, drop drop the bomb on them, destroy everything and be the hero. But he wants to be that Top Gun. The big dog, David and Goliath, David. David was, guys at the best, he was a scoundrel. In some respects, he murdered somebody's wife. I mean, he murdered somebody for their wife. Come on, guys. But he was also a man for God's own heart because he knew where to go to get rid of the sin. And to get confronted a few times. But everybody wants to be the, the hero. Then I saw this aircraft. When I saw this aircraft here, top gun, get lights of fire, get fires go, you know, Be the top gun. Took me above this aircraft carrier. I don't know how many they have, 5,000, 6,000. It's like a small city. It's a bunch of people on them, guys, especially the bigger ones. Bunch of planes, 70, 80 planes, helicopters. There's a lot of stuff going on. The bridge up there, there's an admiral up there a lot of times because it's a capital ship. Maybe, I, I don't know, I'm not, you know, in the Navy, you know, all the hierarchy of it, but, you know, big guy, or maybe even a woman, but most likely it's a guy, but everybody wants to be the top gun or the admiral, they want to be in charge of everything, took me down in the ship, at the very bottom, grew up in Minnesota, guys. When I was born in the Mississippi, I saw some of the, they were just barges, but those little, those tugboats that push them, and their propellers are huge. Well, ocean-going ships like that, the propellers are huge, probably as big as your house. And I think they go, what, 40 knots? That's hauling butt, guys, across, across the ocean. That's, that's pretty fast. 34 knots or 32, whatever it is, it's, you know, contest around 40 miles an hour. That's pretty fast for the big ship. Well, I'm down in the bottom of the ship, and there's a shaft of a propeller coming through. The, coming through, there's a seal around it to keep out the water. And what he showed me, I call them grease monkeys, but they're just young sailors. But nobody sees. But somebody has to keep that seal greased. I'm sure it's more complicated than that. It's probably pretty high tech now. But that shaft has been at thousands of revolutions a minute, you know. It's, and if that ship propeller stops in the middle of a war zone, they got planes to cut that man. It, it can't fail. Failure is not an option. If it leaks, it could devastate the ship. It may not sink it, but it might. But it's going to be pretty brutal. That seal can't be broken. Seal with the promise of the Holy Ghost, guys. Nobody sees them. Down in the bottom, stinky, dirty, greasy, grease monkey guy kind of guys, maybe even some women, I don't know. Just laboring intensely to keep that warship. Nobody sees them. They're not the top guns. The little dogs. Just as important. But you gotta keep that seal, guys, to keep the world out. And right now, 
Man, face it. Even this, the YouTube, the Facebook. Man, we're bombarded with just trash. You can't even turn it out. I, I go, I got a, I'm going to go to a different one, but I got a Bible um, tool that I use. And this is the size of the screen. This is the size of the verses. Everything else is advertising and stuff and things and pop-ups and blah, 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 blah. I just want to look up some scriptures. That's all I do. I don't want three quarters of the neon garbage. And Facebook, too. And all, all, any of pick a media there, man, it's trash. You know what I'm talking about, guys. But get rid of the sin. And how do you do that? The word, belief, not being fearful, taking it to God in prayer and supplication. But very important, guys. I'm telling you guys, there's way more to this than. And I think people realize it's 5 a.m. Time of grace. And why 5 a.m.? Because it's starting the day. And there's no television. There's no CNN. There's no cell phone. You know, you might have to plug it in. I do that just to make a charge for the day. But you don't have to turn it on. No tablet. No new, there's nothing if you don't pick it up. What he wants you to pick up is your cross. Follow him. Pick up your Bible. Whether you do it electronically or whether it's, it's you know, in your hand. Pick it up. Read it. Study it. Pray. That's what I do, guys, in the morning time. I pray and I say, God, what do you want me to do first? Read. you got scriptures. Read, pray. You know, even the order that I do it in. I bring it to them every morning. Sometimes it's two in the morning. Sometimes it's three, five, whatever. You know, different times. They've been waking me up. Um, a lot of times it's 5, but 5 a.m. is really important, guys, that we do it as a nation, as a people. Because we're about to not have a nation. We'll still be as people, but it's about to get cut asunder, guys. I don't know if, there's, if, it, if it's salvageable now or not, honestly, I'll be honest with you. Or if it's just going to be ushered in to this utter chaos and one world government and the mark of the beast. I don't know. I wished I did, kind of, but maybe I don't need to know that. It doesn't look good, but Jesus is good. The blood of the Lamb. And I can tell you so many things that he's done in the midst of this pandemonium that's portrayed as a mess. Jesus is not a mess though, guys. He wants to heal your body and your mind. Because you need your body to do the things he wants you to do and be able to be capable to get around and about. And you need your mind so that you can think of what to do. So that you can lead God direct you. But you need direction. And direction can't come from the world. Has to come from above. The wisdom from above, James 3 17. Come on, guys, get rid of the, the sin and the infection first. And then watch God move. He wants to heal you and me of everything, of all of our infirmities. And it's not just the infirmity of our bodies, it's the infirmity of our minds because it's been polluted. Why do you think I put that out there about church? Get rid of the stage. And why do you even need a stage? Your platform should be wherever God sent you. You don't need all that hoopla. I think we do. Sorry, guys. I'm not saying don't gather together. That's very important, too, because you get strength from one another. I'm not saying any of that, so don't take this, they take that wrong. I'm saying get rid of the sensationalism and the shazam and the one or two people and the, the top gun mentality. There is no top guns. It's like one, one of the reposts that I made. It's not, a, it's not a cruise ship where, you know, a handful of people serve the multitudes that are just relaxing. It's a battleship, guys. All hands on deck. 
I don't care if you're the grease monkey at the bottom keeping the seal intact. The Holy Ghost, or if you're or if you are the top gun, get over yourselves, guys, and bring the sin to him. So he can heal us all. We all need healing, guys. Love you. But if I'm tired of it, I know you everyone out that I'm speaking to is tired of it. I don't care. You know, let's set the the garbage politics aside. Man, guys, are you not tired of it? Set aside the church stuff even. Are you not tired of it? Of course you are. So what's going on? Jesus, that's what he's playing. Jesus, the Holy Ghost in his word. Right now, I'm like I made some errors in a few things, a couple, couple of major, couple of minor, but I didn't see it. I kind of did, but I deviated. I was doing doing the will of the Lord, but I deviated just enough that it became that it probably was already sin. I just didn't realize it, but it became sin. So now it's like, man. But you know what my prayer is? I'm not looking for a bailout. Kind of was because I was scrambling the flesh because it hurt now you know my prayer is God just give me your divine direction in this because I want the sin out of my life for one I want to be healed from it too I want to rise up and walk and run and not be weary and I want you to too love you guys but lay aside every sin and weight that does so easily beset us let the great Physician heal us. It's not just physical. It's mental too. Because he wants our mind cleared. So we be, can be concise and precise. And study and read the Bible. Seek him, seek him daily, diligently. Come on guys. Get rid of the infection. And that infection is sin. In all of us. I'm not exempt from it. I don't get a free pass. This is not Monopoly. I don't get to pass go and collect 200 bucks. Neither do you. This one's for the people, a lot of people in the ministry. Get over yourselves and start helping people like you're called to be. The job description. Have you even read it? it? May not be a career move, guys. You might not get a $100,000 salary. You might have a can of beans, pork and beans. And no can opener, and that might be all you have for the week to eat on. Because he wants you to pray. Instead, you want that goofy, uh, I don't even like them now. I used to think they were okay, but the little fat angels that are running around feeding everybody grapes, and you're sitting on a, on a bench in the Bahamas, or wherever they're sitting. <laughs> Not so. Why would you even want the job? If you really read the description, you wouldn't. So quit pulling the world and, and using the world tactics in the church and calling it a church. In the church. Sorry. If you're not going to be about your father's business, take your sign down. Take, let the sin out. Time to get the sin out. Love you guys. Talk to you soon.